Hello everyone, welcome to the Rainbow Dash Template Tutorial. Here you will learn about the Rainbow Dash Templates. This video will introduce, how to implement the effect of the lifting platform mechanism by coding. Alright, let's get started. In the template, the lifting platform mechanism is mainly composed of a cylinder part and a cube part. Let's first build a lifting platform mechanism like this in the scene. Place a cylinder part and a cube part in the scene. Adjust their position, size, color. Check their anchor properties. Modify their names, and watch out not to repeat the names of the part. A texture is prepared here to be used on the cube part. In the game resources view, select the cube part. Click the plus button next to the part name to add a decal. Drag the prepared decals into the decal property, and adjust the displayed surface. Now, the lifting platform mechanism is roughly completed. First, we observe the effect of the lifting platform. The lift table will automatically ascend and descend and will stay in place for a period of time when it ascends to the highest point or descends to the lowest point. In the process of ascending, if the player jumps to the platform, then the platform will immediately begin to descend. Next, let's first complete the logic for ascending and descending the lifting platform. Click Game Settings, select Triggers and Scripts, then click Server Script Management. Create a new server script and change its name to, Lifting Platform. Double click the script to open the script editor. First, define a module, Lifting Platform. Although module names and script names are allowed to be different in the editor, it is recommended to keep the two names the same for better project management. Secondly, we need to define some variables. The part variable is used to store the lifting platform obtained from the scene. The max position variable is the highest position that the lifting platform can ascend to. The min position variable is the lowest position at which the lifting platform can descend to. The initial position variable is the initial position of the lifting platform. The speed variable is the speed at which the lifting platform ascends and descends. The next position variable is the target position of the movement. The interval vector variable is the differential distance that the lifting platform moves per frame. The timer variable holds the created timer object. Then, define an externally accessible startup function, and pass a map parameter to it. Call the findFirstChild function with the root property of the map parameter to obtain the lifting platform parts in the scene. After obtaining the lifting platform part, use the world position property of the part to initialize the position of the part. We want the lifting platform to move down initially, so set next position to min position. Then use the target position to subtract the current position of the lifting platform to get the difference between the two. The difference between the two is normalized, then it is multiplied by the set movement speed to obtain the difference distance of the lifting platform movement per frame. Finally, turn on a timer and define a local function as the timer callback per frame. Because the lifting platform has the highest point and the lowest point position restrictions, 
Therefore, before each movement of the lifting platform, it is necessary to determine whether the current position reaches the highest or lowest point. In other words, we have to determine in the timer's callback function whether the lifting platform has reached the target position, and then handle it accordingly. Here, we can use the distance function of vector 3 to get the distance between the current position of the lifting platform and the target position. Because the lifting platform is moving every frame, a direct comparison of the two position vectors will have errors. So, we use the distance between the two positions to compare with a fixed number, and if it is less than that number, we default the lifting platform to the target position. For example, when the distance variable is less than 0.5, we assume that the lifting platform has reached the target position. Otherwise, let the lifting platform move, and the move distance is the interval vector, just calculated earlier. After the lifting platform reaches the target position, we have to determine whether the target position is the lowest point. If it is the lowest point, then change the target position to the highest point, otherwise the target position is the lowest point. Then the difference between the current position of the lifting platform and the target position is calculated and normalized. This give us the differential distance to be moved by the lifting platform in each frame. Save the codes and open the server's main script. Use the required keyword to load the lifting platform module. Use the get static map function of the world class to get the current map. In order to avoid that the game object is not yet loaded when the player enters the game, causing us to be unable to obtain the lifting platform parts, we can start a timer and wait for 160 frames before calling the lifting platform module startup function. After completing the code, go back to the editor, run the game, and look at the results. As you can see, the lift can now ascend and descend. When the lifting platform is at the highest or lowest point, it needs to wait for a while before it can start again. To implement this logic, you need to define two variables first. The max position stay time variable is the time that the lifting platform stays at the highest point. The min position stay time variable is the time that the lifting platform stays at its lowest point. Since the timer uses frames, if we want the lifting platform to stay at the highest point for 5 seconds, what is the conversion to frames? For the scripts on the server, the editor specifies that 1 second is equal to 20 frames, which means that if the lifting platform wants stays for 5 seconds, then it should stay for 100 frames. We can set the delay property of the timer depending on whether the current position is the lowest point or not. The delay property of the timer indicates the duration of each interval of the timer in frames. Changing the delay property means changing the length of each interval of the timer. After completing the code, go back to the editor, run the game, and look at the results. You can see that after the lifting platform descends to the lowest point, it does stay for a while. However, we will find that the lifting platform ascent process is very strange, each move pauses a long time. This is because we modified the delay property of the timer when the lifting platform reached the lowest point, so that the interval of the timer is the length of the stay at the lowest point when the lift is ascending. The solution is simple, open the lifting platform script and change the delay property of the timer to one each time the lift moves. Save the code, go back to the editor and run the game. You can see that the lifting platform ascends and descends normally now. When the player steps on the ascending lifting platform, the platform will immediately descend. To achieve such an effect, the collision detection trigger is required. 
The editor provides two functions for registering collision detection triggers which are the register handler function and the add handler function of the trigger class. The difference between the two is that the register handler function overrides the existing triggers with the same trigger name, while the add handler function saves all the triggers with the same name in the trigger queue and calls the trigger saved in the trigger queue in turn when activated. To be consistent with the logic in the template, we use the add handler function. The add handler function requires three parameters. The first parameter is the configuration information of the object that activated the trigger. Here we get the player's configuration information through the entity.getconfig function. The second parameter is the trigger name. Here we use the trigger when the entity starts touching the part. The third parameter is the callback function to be executed after the trigger is activated. Note that the trigger names are built into the editor, and more trigger names can be found in the official API documentation on the official website. According to the API documentation, there is one parameter in the trigger callback function. The object1 field of this parameter indicates the object that activated the trigger, which in this case is the player. The part segment of this parameter indicates the part that collided with the player. Because there will be many parts in the game scene, so we have to determine whether the parts colliding with the player and the lifting platform parts are the same. If it is the same, then we modify the target position to the lowest point position. Then calculate the differential distance that the lifting platform has to move per frame. We put this code into a local function, and then call that local function in the startup function. After completing the code, go back to the editor, run the game, and look at the results. As you can see, during the ascending of the lifting platform, if a player steps on the lifting platform, then the platform will immediately descend. Each time the add handler function is used, a trigger object is returned. We can use this object to destroy registered triggers in order to prevent more and more triggers from being registered. For example, the registration collision detection logic we just wrote. If we call the startup function multiple times, the multiple collision detection logic will be registered. We can save the return trigger object and call the trigger object for trigger destruction at the right time. Of course, you can also use the register handler function here, so that you don't have to worry about registering more and more triggers. In addition, we need to close the timer at the right time to avoid unnecessary timers consuming resources and causing performance problems. To close the timer, you can call the stop function of the timer object. More API related content can be found in the official API documentation. This is all the content of this video. I hope this content can help you make better games. To learn more about the content related to the Rainbow Dash template, you can leave a comment below the video, or post it on the official forum. See you in the next video.